and breakdowns. Welcome back to the Chill Sounds and Breakdowns podcast. We are on episode 62. 62. All right, we got another banger today. Uh, today, I'm excited. We have Austin here from ALG, from uh, Squeezebox Bandits, and a whole bunch of other freaking projects. So I'm excited. How are you doing today, Austin? I'm great, man. How are you doing? Great, man. I'm having a good time. I'm glad you. Ha- I'm like <laughs> the clap. <laughs> um, I'm glad you made the time like to come out. To- I know we were like been kind of going back and forth trying to like get it get it settled in um since chill sounds but uh but i'm glad we finally like got to you're getting to sit down and do this but um again i appreciate your time um yeah but i I, uh uh i mean i guess we can start from there like chill sounds and chill sounds was freaking awesome i that was the first time i got to see like alg play like live and dude it's such a fucking like really cool like jam session like feel like like it just feels really like nice it's that like really like cool like live energy um how long has because uh, I, I, again i know you have a lot of projects but alg specifically how long has that been around um i've kind of been working on it for maybe five or six years but i really only got like guys to start jamming with me maybe mm-hmm. three or four years ago and okay. we started like doing live shows here and there okay and then did, did alg start off as just like like you're like you doing everything like writing everything yeah yeah pretty much okay. and like programming drums and yeah. stuff and <laughs> playing guitar and bass okay because you 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 play guitar you play bass um do you play anything like else instrument? um keys a little bit but okay i program the keys too so yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah because that's kind of that's kind of what i was looking at it kind of started off as like uh a, a your your per, like kind of personal project at first and then like you're saying finding other guys to play with you um the style you kind of chose to go in um i think uh i think what like i think what you call it's like a latin fuse like kind of like you know rock band or something like that what um what were the influence that kind of got you to like wanting to write stuff like that i think i like a lot of fusion and progressive bands but then also like danceable kind of latin stuff yeah so like a santana is a good example Mm. or like i think mars volta does it too yeah like they take it to the next level of like in infusing rock with latin rhythms and stuff that yeah i didn't um i didn't pay attention to that as much when i because i'm i'm uh, late to the game on like the mars volta to be honest with you uh and then uh once i started listening to it i started to pick some of that stuff out you know what i mean in the instrumentation and like some of just like the uh the singing stuff uh i did get to see them when they stopped by did, did you go to the the show when they came by no nah, i missed no it. Uh, like and i was it was like again like i like because i'm so late to the game i didn't i didn't even like get tickets i got like pretty much gifted tickets and i'm oh, like nice okay like let's go um and it was just such a crazy experience like the and then first of all i didn't know that they hadn't played here in uh over 10 years or something like that or played it all like so it had been a while but um that's that kind of like style bending like music and just adding like different elements it's it's something that i've grown really fond of of like adding stuff together that normally doesn't go together yeah yeah. um but you hit on this the the danceable like type music is a new concept that i've been more interested in like in thinking about writing because like i used to write like uh in a metalcore band for like forever so that completely to change down like you know what and i'm seeing bands even just like around here um uh, i had already mentioned the, like this band but uh b- before today uh meech pango was a band i saw live here and people dancing and like that to music i'm like how do you do that yeah, you know what yeah. i mean like that's so cool to see it um I'm sure that, that that was one of the like the big influences, like how to how to figure out how to do that for your band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people used to, I feel like, go to concerts to dance. Yeah. Like if you're going to see a uh, James Brown or Earth, Wind and Fire or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're there to see the band, but you're really there to like dance and have a good time. To whatever, dance so. it. Yeah. I feel like that was part of the attraction, not just to sit there and like watch the band, but well, you're like, yeah, because if you just, I mean, I, I take it to some degree but if you just want it to like listen to the songs you can listen to them at any time like on recordings and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. that too, so. um i do i do you know give the fact that like recording uh 
I mean, sorry, uh, watching a performance live is different. You know what I mean? Like, they'll, you'll add nuanced things and things like that live. But you're, for the most part, and I don't know if it's like, you know, getting old or anything, like the experience of being out at the show is is the fun part. You know what I mean? Like, because sometimes I'll, I'll, li- I'll be one of those people who like just listen really intently and I'm just like standing there and like staring at people like playing on stage <laughs> and just like, this is really cool. So I'm like paying attention to like the drummer or like bass player, guitar player, anything like that. And I'm like, this is just cool. But then there are those other moments where you kind of just like, lose control of your body a little bit and like just you're either jumping around or you're dancing and doing something like that so capturing that energy um and being able to basically i mean you when you're there performing you are um what's the right word for this like you you are the uh you're curating basically like the energy and the vibe of like the crowd yeah um so it's not only like in the way you write music but like okay performing wise like how do we get these people like to to move and have fun yeah yeah um and but, I like also yeah. um, with that also you said kind of like the we have a jam feel. I like that um, kind of approaching it like a jazz band where like the song structure is there, like on the album, whatever mm-hmm. is a song structure. But then live, um, we are li- free to improvise over that structure. So oh, that so it's y'all like, uh, y'all add some improvising stuff like yeah, the or songs? like might not play it exactly the same every time, oh. or we might like hang on a section longer or something like that so i like kind of the idea of it being a different experience every time kind of like the way jazz guys do it yeah um i've i've been to i mean i mean here i think we're looking at if we have like the the little jazz scat lounge in in fort worth and i remember going to one and feeling like that i'm like i don't feel like there's a designated structure (laughs) but like everybody is still like it's still together. It's still a cohesive piece. Like, because a jazz musician is, first of all, so freaking talented. Yeah, yeah. Um, Where they're able, basically every one of them is able to keep up with all the other ones and changes. Like I said, I go, none of these changes seem like they're, like they talk to each other or rehearse yeah, any yeah, of this yeah. shit. It's like, okay, let's let's figure out how to do this for now. Um, which adds, like you, like you said, that unique feel of like it being a, a jam session and people feeling like they're seeing like, oh, like something different every time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, what you mentioned something right now. Yeah, the the, the jam session feel is is uh, it's really cool in like a a natural space. It, it literally feels like we're in like when you were playing like uh when, at, at Chill Sounds that I heard it was like oh it's like we're in like that rehearsal like room and like it's it just feels like really nice. You guys have a really nice dynamic together, um, and uh, you could kind of like read that energy, and it was really like a really cool performance. Um, when did you, you said it took you a while to like get the, you know, kind of like your team and your guys together. Um, how, how long, um, from when you started it to like getting an actual like band members, how long was that? Uh, it was maybe cause I wasn't necessarily looking for band members at first. It mm-hmm. kind of just worked out that I met, uh, Alex, the guitar player mm-hmm. that plays with me, um, through another band and uh so i already had some tracks sorry and i got i got him to uh just record guitar over like what i already had Mm. and then i was like wow this like changed a lot and especially because he's like a really amazing uh guitar player yeah and then uh i think so then that put the idea in my mind to try to find like a drummer and maybe just jam over like i think we did like three songs Mm -hmm. and uh then that got them interested and so then they were like well hey i'm down to like get together and maybe do some shows or whatever mm. and then uh so then that's when i recorded uh the cove this uh the cove session cd okay because uh we recorded all the songs that i had already released like solo we uh recorded them like in a studio as a live band oh, so okay. uh, the songs changed a lot so i wanted to like have something to show like hey this is a live band version now so it's like interesting so so you recorded everything like as like a live session was were you guys uh, did you guys all play together or like just uh, live instrumentation yeah no we actually did it like in a day man like we had already worked all the songs out yeah. so we just booked the studio for a day and we just played through each song like three times like at then, the same time like everybody yeah, yeah, together yeah. yo okay yeah, yeah. that's freaking and cool and i actually have videos 
on YouTube of most of the songs, like the actual takes while oh, we're recording. Oh, while them. you were recording them? Yeah, yeah. That's so much pressure. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that's kind of the cool. We had to live. Maybe there's like a mistake here or there, but we had to like live with it in a way. So, how do you? So, uh, how how do you feel about that? Because I, I go back and look at that and uh, struggling with the part of like me being like everything has to be like perfect on like something and in uh in in metalcore i feel like it it feels a lot more that way where i'm like oh stuff has to like this but i've i've had so many like of my favorite like albums and stuff like that that do have mess ups that i find out like later i don't even like know them um until like somebody points them out or something like that oh this wasn't supposed to be in there or something like that yeah. or, or something got slightly out of tune here or like this hit or whatever um but in a live session, I feel like you would have to be kind of okay with like not every because having to do with the entire live session over and over yeah, again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess it would be incredibly like taxing for everybody to get it wrong. Um, was that a was that a little difficult to kind of like let go of like okay like this wasn't perfect but like we're gonna keep this one. Yeah, uh, I think most of them came out pretty solid because we had been jamming them for a bit. But yeah, there's a few is like some of the songs have like solos, mm -hmm. so it's like oh well, I could have maybe done that better or something. Oh, okay. But uh, but yeah, because it was the live setting, it's like I was totally okay with just it is what it is. It's a little more and welcoming like, to the idea of like oh, okay, if it's not as you know, if you still feel like you could do better, it's still like this was a really good cohesive effort. You know what I mean? Like with it, with everybody like doing it. Um, yeah, I feel like that would be, that would be like, yeah, I would be nervous as hell like, <laughs> um, to record something like that live. Um, but you, uh, you, you do those though for like other like bands, like you do, well, you, uh, I saw you started doing more of them recently. Did, did yeah. you change the studio setup up? Cause I've seen like different videos, but the most recent one I saw was the Yasmin one and that space looks amazing. Like, yeah, honestly. Yeah. yeah. That looks so cool. Yeah. It's a studio five five one in uh south fort worth okay it's really awesome uh my friend like knows the owner so they kind of uh donated the time to us to make the videos there mm, okay. but um yeah I'm, I'm calling it uh on the way home sessions yeah and uh so the idea is to do it in different studios like different bands in different studios oh. um just because uh, it would be fun for me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I like recording bands, and it would be fun to go to different studios and kind of make a network of bands and studios and, like, promote everyone all at once kind of thing. Okay. Um, how, how, when did, when did, so the, when did that part get started of, of like, your, uh, you know, music, like, careers, like, uh, uh, the, the production side of it, like, the, the recording and mixing and stuff like that? When did, when did you start doing that? Um, I started that. Pretty early on, I had, like, my friend gave me, like, a bootleg version of Ableton. Yeah. <laughs> like, in high school. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. allegedly. coming for you. It's been, like, <laughs> long enough, right? Okay. No, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I've had it for a long time, and I've always messed around with recording. But, uh, yeah, maybe around 10 years or so ago, I got access to, like, the Arlington studio, which is, like, one of the, the other studio that is in those videos. Mm -hmm. And um, that guy, Billy Herzig, he became like a mentor and really showed me a bunch of like recording techniques and also gave me the opportunity to uh, like actually work and record bands, not just learn about it, but actually do it. Oh, actually like on, basically like hands-on like that Engineering work. the sessions, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Like he would be there producing, but I would be engineering, gave me that opportunity. So I was able to like learn pretty quickly or whatever. And after that, you're just like trying to translate it to see like what can I do with this now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like I have these things that I've worked on, so now like let's do something with it. But yeah, and that's the one thing I like um, recording bands. So I think that's I think honestly the the like I said the only way home sessions is, is just a cool concept to be able to do them at different places with different bands. You, you have different ways of highlighting. Plus, you'd have to. Um, I feel like. It's going to be, I mean, already because you're doing more, different places and stuff, it's already going to be like its own like unique like session. But it being a different place, it's like 
the this I'm, I'm assuming like the sounds like going to be different like in there yeah. so you'll have to adjust like to all these like new places so um i would imagine with like the passion that you're like speaking about it that you like it's that's just something that drives you like oh okay like i have to face this type of challenge now like and figure out how to work it here yeah yeah exactly it's yeah. gonna be like a different experience yeah that's i mean that's such a cool idea do you um do you have like do you know who like artists that you are having or is it kind of just like let's figure out who's coming next like just like kind of the next one at a time yeah i've been uh just barely hanging on like yeah. getting the getting them as i because my goal has been to do one every release one video every two weeks but i'm doing like two songs of each band so it's like one week is their first video two weeks later their second video mm. and then the next time would be like a new artist so almost like a new artist every month kind of yeah yeah sort of is um, yeah but it's like yeah i've been barely getting them in like yeah i mean it's hard like logistically just that like you know like when you can get the studio time when yeah. uh the artists are free depending on the size of the band like i mean i know like yasmin's band is like super big like <laughs> yeah yeah like they have quite a few people like in that band um but yeah like logistically they're just getting like it it um kind of just situated and stuff um I was listening to actually like you 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 brought us you were kind enough to bring us the the release here. Um, I was listening to a track on that album and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is there a harmonica solo and like uh, it's actually an accordion? An accordion is that what? Okay, like I I was listening to. I was like I can't tell exactly what that is, but I was like it threw me off and I like I brought it back and I'm like what is that? Like I was wanting to figure it out, but that's so cool. The um, yeah, it's um, Abel from Squeezebox Bandits. Oh, really? Yeah, the other band that I play with. Yeah. I, I, got, I just, I was like, hey man, can you just come through and just play some stuff on this song? It'll, you know, it'll take less yeah. than an hour or whatever, <laughs> just play over it. And so yeah, he just did like a couple of takes. Yeah, that's, yeah, it sounded really, really cool. But yeah, you do, you, so yeah, you do play with Squeezebox Bandits and they're like pretty freaking popular like around here, like the, as far as like uh, gigs go, like um, have you been playing with them longer than, no, not, not longer than ALG or have you? Uh, I had already started the ALG stuff, okay. I guess, before, but. How, how did like that come, that connection come to be? Um, I just knew him through playing around with different bands mm -hmm. and uh, one day he needed a bass player and he called me up and then. I just stuck around pretty yeah. much. <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm grateful for that uh, gig because it's allowed me like the free time to be able to work on my own stuff. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. The, uh, the, the thing about also about that album that you've kind of been diving into is that you've been doing these like little like almost like they're not what is it like it's augmented reality i guess is what it was called i, I want to yeah. say hologram but like <laughs> you were saying like in that like there's an app you get and like scan just the picture of it and then like it pops up i've seen it i've seen a couple of videos i haven't done it myself yet but it pops up like a little like performance video of yeah. like which is like what y'all is it the same performance y'all did for one of the music videos where it was like insert it to like a bunch of like different like places yeah 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 so with the same app you can like scan the code and it'll pop up on that image mm -hmm. or you can just uh like like place it on a ground on the ground or like on the table here in the like the ar fashion where you just like kind of put it yeah, like yeah wherever. exactly you can place it somewhere so for that music video i use the same performance because we just like did a green screen video yeah uh, i use that same performance i just placed it in like i try to find weird <laughs> unique places, places yeah but. um so that idea is not common like among like bands and stuff like that or that, that i've seen um where like what kind of drove you to be like i want to do something like this i think i just found the app in the app store one day and i was just uh thinking it would be cool to like incorporate i was thinking the album would be cool if you just have an album and you mm -hmm. can like see a 3d image on it it's so. funny because i've seen stuff like that like on t like tv shows and stuff like that i forgot what it was like it was a show within the show because i think it's it's a show called community and they have like a, a show on the, like there's a show that they watch on there and they do that it's like oh like it's a it's a hologram of a band performance and like it looks exactly like what you oh, did nice. with yours and i'm like I was, that's why when i looked at it, i'm like oh is that a thing now like you can do that <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah and like the technology has gotten better even as I've used it. So, and there's like a lot more uh, companies, it seems like, doing it now. To so add it to I think it. it's still like kind of early and like 
I must admit that the app is kind of clunky at times. Yeah. But uh, it'll only get better, so... Yeah, yeah, I think it's just still, like... It's still something pretty, like, unique to, like, put out. Like I said, it's not something that I've, you know, seen anybody else do at the moment. I'm sure there's people, like, doing whatever, but... Um, I think on top of like the music that you write, like it's you, you kind of might always be like just constantly looking for like, okay, what can we do extra here? Like to, to add to the experience of it. Um, and that's, I think that's like a really like cool, like thing to, to add to it. Um, but you've been kind of like messing around with someone like that, that stuff of ideas, like to, to increase, um, Actually, I don't. I should have probably asked this first. I know you have an idea that you're like looking to work with, but I don't. Yeah, actually, I don't want to spill the beans on it. Nah, if, like it's wanna, still like hush hush. <laughs> I do want to talk about it, actually. Okay, okay, uh, cool, cool. I was like, I was like, man, I should have asked before, like if I can bring it up or not. But no, yeah, dude, yeah, uh, go, I, I'd like you to like talk about it. So, I'm calling it an interactive music experience, and uh, it's kind of the idea is a group of people. Um, uh, let's see a group of people you listen to a song and you're able to each person is able to like manipulate one of the sounds going on in the song okay so like someone can control the bass guitar someone else is going to control the guitar the electric guitar someone else is going to control the keys sounds while the song is happening so like um it's gonna make each track like unique, like so. Uh, so the two controls are like you have a volume control mm -hmm. and a effects knob. So then you can uh, control the volume of the bass guitar and add an effects uh, like signal while the song is playing. Yeah, is that, while the song is playing. So that's that's the idea that I got like when I was when I heard about it. Is that basically you want this like experience where people show up to like a, you know, like a, a venue or something and like, and there's this thing set up, you know what I mean? So there's a song playing kind of that's already been created, but um, everybody as the song is playing, you know, gets to mess around and create. And then by the end of like, you know, whatever the track is, like they've now created a brand new track like yeah, together, yeah. like at, at like this like event or something, but yeah, they, exactly. get, they get to kind of like do that. I was, I was like, I was trying to understand. I was like, "How? Like, how does this happen?" Like, I was like, w "What? Like, um, what? What's what inspired you? Like, to to try to make something like this?" Um, I think one of the things was seeing that uh, interactive Van Gogh experience. Oh, the one at the museum where you like? Yeah, I never actually it? went to it, but I saw the ad, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, thinking, "What is so? Yeah, they put what could be interactive about it? I guess I should have gone." Yeah, but uh. Then it just made me think, well, what would like a music, interactive music thing where mm -hmm. you can like actually affect like the outcome of mm -hmm. like what's happening kind of. Well, it kind of gives the, uh, when, when I was listening about the idea, um, to me it was like, it kind of gives the audience to be part of that creative process. Like, you know, when normally like you go see like, you know, a band or something like that, you get to just experience like what's already been made and stuff. But in this case, it's something that they can personally like have an effect on it. And like I said, by the end you get a, uh, an actual like result of something you were a part of like making yeah yeah, yeah. and if you have, it's, if you're with your friends or whatever then yeah. and like, you, like you were uh, i think one of the things you mentioned um about the idea was uh that there's no like musical like uh experience really required you know what i mean like it, it anybody can pretty much like go up and try to do this yeah yeah because i'm just using a a bunch of midi controllers so each person gets like two knobs uh so it's like pretty simple and you can you're free if you want to just wank around on the knob all the whole time then you're free to do that and it's still gonna uh be like somewhat musical and like what i'm hoping and kind of is that people kind of like start listening to each other and like uh, rhythmically kind of like bouncing off of each other mm. and i'm also trying to write new songs where it's kind of like that idea will be more apparent like so it'll be easier to like catch on to like yeah like uh, where the things will be kind of more like right now I'm just since I'm testing it out still kind of mm -hmm. I'm just doing like songs that I already had and adding sounds to it but now with now that I know how it works and stuff now I'm like trying to make songs specific oh, for that cater it to that to the yeah, actual yeah. like experience okay um, 
and at the at the end of like these, is it stuff that like is is it just like that live experience of creating something like that, or like are you gonna like actually make these tracks and like put them out on something just to to be able to hear them hear them back or something like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely like put them on uh, at least YouTube, mm -hmm. and just I think it'd be cool to just have like every video and just be like these people were the were here this night, yeah, and they did this, and so it's also like not just one song, but it's like a whole forty minute set or so of music okay. that i have going on and then like i said right now you're testing it so it's all just music that you've previously done um so all the music going forward again will just be stuff that you're personally creating for the purpose of this yeah yeah to try to set up like um more interesting like scenarios where like what people do will kind of like bounce off each other like just mm -hmm. one basic idea is kind of like i'm um, having like a grand piano sound just playing like a bunch of notes mm. but then people will be able to turn off turn on and off each note so then they'll make like it's like a ascending say it's a ascending line yeah but then when people like mute some and stuff like that then it's gonna like kind of oh, jump bounces. around and be like a so it's the song will be written in one way but eventually like it's gonna can turn into something completely because yeah, yeah. of what can be eliminated and manipulated yeah like, exactly in the song that's what i'm hoping for anyways yeah the idea i think it'll i mean it'll take a while i mean people <laughs> I mean, there was guitar hero and dj hero like people like the interaction like with music but this is like completely different because it's a again an original track that they're getting to be a part of and i think it's something i think it's it also pulls on the idea of like community and music and just people like hey let's hang out and do something today i think it i go fits along like those those type of events and those type of like yeah. outings for people and be like hey let's do this tonight like it's gonna be an experience like all these like different like things that people go do in like groups i think this is like a really like cool thing to yeah yeah to get together like that and, and again just to experience it you know what i mean it's not about like whether you are making something good or bad i don't it's not a perfect example but like uh people who do those um uh, what are they called? I don't even know what they're called. But those like like painting sessions where like everybody gets together and like this one person like showing them how yeah, to yeah. like paint. So I, I'm assuming something like that and everybody gets like, again, in this case, like it's a group thing where everybody gets to participate together, um, which is cool because you'll have to figure out how to work with each other and like, oh, what are they? Since you only get your two knobs, you only can control this part. So I'm sure during the session, it could be like, hey, like try turning like your thing like are off like on this one and like i'm thinking of this idea and people bouncing like their yeah, ideas yeah. off of um it, it's cool it seems like i said I, i'd definitely like to see like what that looks like like in, in person just like listen to it and i'm like i want to turn some knobs too <laughs> yeah dude it's fun yeah like i said it's fun just to sit there and like mess around and um yeah the other idea kind of behind it is like how much i enjoy jamming with the guys mm -hmm. i don't know this is kind of like in a way, trying to give people the opportunity to jam that maybe have never had the opportunity to, like, play in a group mm. setting where you're, like, playing together, you know, and, like, yeah. bouncing off of each other. I think music is kind of unique in that way that not a lot of other things, I guess, like, sports and stuff, mm. you kind of have to work together yeah, and I react they, to each other, but it's, like... Yeah, you're... Uh, you're not wrong in that, but in, in music, especially jam sessions, um, for me, when I was playing in a band, they were like the essential part of like the creative process for writing music. Because um, later on, we tried the, uh, the the way of like, oh, okay, no, I have this idea, let's play this idea, and like and it's stuff being tracked. But the part that I missed was like somebody might have like a piece of an idea, <laughs> and it's like, all right, just play that, and everybody like playing along to it, and then like having the, hold on, hold on. Play that again. I have yeah, something, yeah. and like so those because like dude, we used to, we used to we uh, we didn't have a rehearsal space. So we first we were practicing outside on my front lawn. This was years ago. <laughs> this was like literally on the front lawn. Uh, uh, we had a we had like our practice sessions, and uh, nobody ever said anything because I remember when we started practicing. I I walked around to all the neighbors and stuff, and uh, I uh, I asked. I was like, hey, like we're gonna be playing. Like it's normally on Sundays. I go, if uh, it's gonna, it's not gonna be early in the morning, it's not gonna be late at night. I go, it'll be probably from like noon to like four in that in that space. Not for four hours completely, but, but in that space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone was like, it's cool. I go, if it's, if you got something going on, if you need me to shut up, I go, just let us know. We'll carry it down. And it, and it was, and we was like that for like maybe like a year, year and a half, too. 
Um, well, that's nice of you to do mm, that. Yeah, I mean, because well, I'm like, because I, I wanted to practice, and I'm like, we have nowhere else to do this. So, like, um, but I think once the cops did like pull up on us and said that somebody called, but I'm like, nobody called you. I go, because they're like, this is my beat. I always come through here. I've never seen you guys. I'm like, we're here every Sunday. I go, There's yeah. no way you could have not seen this. Anyways, besides the point, like we uh, we we had that, so we would we moved. And then our neighbor, like, let us practice in their garage. But we would have practices for, like, six hours. But it was, like, practice some of the songs that we knew. Then it was, like, four hours of just, like, sitting around and jamming ideas. You know what I mean? Like, and just playing and then taking a break and just, like, talking. But I feel like that interaction of not only, like, the freeform playing and, like, jamming. Just, like, just play whatever. And then having the time, too, to, like, sit with each other and just, like, talk to each other. Like, it just made it... It made it a lot more communal, and everybody was like on the same page about like where people were at because we were having to interact with each other. And I felt like once we started losing a bit of that, like it, it started changing like the dynamic of like writing. And I'm like, oh, we need you need to be able like to, <laughs> to hang out with these people and like and jam sessions are a great way to do that because you're put yourself in a room and you're just like playing music, talking for a bit, pl- keep playing music again, and just figuring that out. So it's I think it's a cool vibe to bring to to people who don't have the opportunity for that experience yeah yeah for sure and that's i feel the same way like you start uh i've kind of gone through that process of like you move away from the jamming stuff and you're kind of like sending files back and forth and stuff Mm -hmm. and like that's helpful but then it's not quite the same as like that instant response that you get yeah um i think it's cool i respect the hell out of the fact that you can do that now these days um and just work on me because i've seen like bands work on each other and like they live out in different states you know, yeah or, or whatever and they're just like sitting i mean that's the way that they can jam together and they're sending stuff back and forth and even with bands now i think it's important i think it's i think it's one of the one of the most on the top of the list of like things that you should be able to do like as a musician you should be able to figure out a way like to at least track you yeah know, your stuff like whatever you're doing get to whether it's like just a scratch guitar or something but something that can be sent if you're not able to like get together, you know, if it's inconvenient, because that's one of the biggest things in like bands is like you have to find time to yeah. sit down and get together. You know what I mean? So for me, I like the idea of like if you have like if you came up with like a guitar part and you send me a recording, it could be rough or whatever, but I can get the gist of it. By the time we get to a jam session, I have an idea of like what you're doing and it's the jam session can flow a little bit easier. So yeah, I yeah. think the the combination of that works really well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, also, yeah, just like um, recording ourselves and hearing mm-hmm. ourselves back is like very beneficial to you. That, yeah. So, <laughs> so that, <laughs> that is just a, a byproduct of sending tracks to each other is you have to hear your you playing. You kind of have like, to oh, hear it and be okay with like, ooh, okay. Like, I need to work on better. This. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had that a lot. Like, that was one of the reasons I learned how to semi track my vocals isn't i don't know how to mix it or anything like that but i needed to be able to hear a reference track of myself because that's i mean with singing like especially it's one of those things that like you think you sound away and you sound a little different like yeah. on the recording like I, at least that's in my experience it's always happened like it's a gist but there's some stuff that i miss you know what i mean because i'm focused on whatever i'm doing so and then when we recorded we recorded an ep um, I, I keep saying this, but we got lucky that they let us pay per song because I did so many vocal oh, takes because nice. I was, <laughs> I was having, I, cause I didn't, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know how to do it. Like, um, uh, and I was just doing take year after take and they were like bad. And I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm embarrassed. And I like, I don't know what to do. So being able well, now that like, I can kind of record like those reference tracks, I can, I can sit in my room and record those tracks as many times as I can <laughs> until like, I feel like I'm okay like with it or to get my idea down you know instead of like doing it over and over with somebody just watching me it's like damn this dude can't can't hit a note with it yeah yeah. Uh, yeah and then you're like stressing out and stuff stress. like, we've all been there yeah too. It's like, oh man i'm i'm doing bad right it's now a like, tough, <laughs> it's a tough time you know what i mean but it, it, it goes to learn i used to be really bad about preparing um for like those studio sessions i'm like let's just go in and do it instead of like warming up and like you know taking care of like my you know my throw vocal cords being easy and don't not talking because uh i think i would like work all day so it, where i was working i was talking like completely like that entire time so by the time i go like go do vocals like dude my voice is like out like yeah. it's, it's like not wanting to do what i need i'm like oh okay so taking care of that maybe not like 
<laughs> working or talking that they were planning on something like so where I can get like some vocal rest or whatever. Because all that stuff, honestly, I always thought it was like, I go, that's not a thing. I go, I think, I think, uh, I was like, hey, vocalists are just being too like diva ish. It's like, oh, like I can't talk right now. I'm on vocal rest. And then yeah. I like, I did it for like one of our recordings. So I'm like, I'm not going to talk today until like I warm up to like do the recording. And then that was the smoothest the recording's ever been. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. So they have a point. You're like, Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, they were right. <laughs> they were right. I hate it. Um, but yeah, you do a lot of like the recording um, for your for your own like band and stuff like that. Does does everybody in the band like also kind of mess around with it, or do they, are you like kind of the main source for like tracking everything? Uh, yeah, I pretty much just get together with them like one on one and record ideas and stuff. Mm. Like yeah, I kind of let, what I usually do is I'll have like couple of chord progressions or like some kind of structure then i'll just get together with like alex one day and just have him record like some ideas and uh then i'll do that like with a drummer mm -hmm. and have him record some ideas and try to build the songs that way so you are are y'all mainly because instrumental because i know you do feature vocalists on some is it um i've seen one that pops up like quite a bit on the i think on the record is the same one that pops up on like is it two of the songs that have vocals on it too yeah there's two on two? the okay record um and then i saw like some live performances where you do have like a vocalist is that just like a, a part of the band or is it just one of those few songs that like you'll you'll add vocals to if you feel like it um for this record uh there's two songs that alex the guitar player uh mm -hmm. he actually just wrote some lyrics and came when we like got together one day he's like hey i got these lyrics and i was like all right cool let's hear them and then i was like yeah dude let's do it so uh I mean, yeah, yeah. This album was like the most collaborative so far out of all the albums. Like, it was a uh, right before COVID kind of that we were uh, working on it, mm -hmm. and uh, so at that point we had already recorded the Cove and stuff. So we were all like pretty. We were like um, playing together a lot at that yeah. point, and so we were like started writing this album. Then uh, COVID kind of shut that down. Like it was because yeah, you released that 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, or it was after. Uh, it was like in the middle of COVID, kind of because what happened, mm. or not in the middle, but middle towards of that the end. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, yeah. It was like so because of COVID, uh, we all had time to work on it, like ourselves. Yeah. So that's when we were sending a lot of files back and forth. Yeah. And then uh, once we were able to finally like get back together in the studio then we already had, like pretty much knew what we were going to play and mm -hmm. uh, so it came together pretty quick at that point but, yeah uh, so yeah that was like really fun because for, it was really fun for me because it was more collaborative than it had been before and it was like i see the benefit of having other minds in on the process like early on kind of yeah. rather than towards the end which is what i was doing you were just basically writing almost all of it and then like bringing in yeah and they're just like, kind of sprinkling there so in this one it was it was kind of like that full band experience yeah where like everybody's getting like a, a a chance to like create their own parts and then have input on it yeah yeah or yeah really close to that and like yeah everyone like brought in sections and bits and riffs and stuff so it was really cool nice what uh so going forward like um because that was the last release um do, are you working on like anything currently like with alg or like what what's happening like right now with yeah, yeah, I got like a, I got like a demo of an album, like the structure. So now I'm kind of at that point where I'm getting together one on one with the guys individually and trying mm -hmm. to like get more ideas out of them, kind of. And then, so this one has been been a bit more of like me writing it, kind of back to the yeah, back to that, thing. just because. Uh, everyone's busy again yeah. since it's not uh, COVID and stuff. <laughs> the, t the time, time, yeah, time, yeah, yeah. time is like, such a big thing to find. Like, uh, it's not only time, like time to jam. It's time to sit down and write. It's time to like when you go record. Like, it's it, it is hard. And then, I mean, the the project started primarily like that with you, of uh, you know, creating um, most of the structures and kind of just getting uh, it peppered in, like you were saying at the end, um, with everybody helping, um, but. Like, uh, the new project, is it the same type of, like, feel that you're trying to make with the music? Or, like, what's, like, what's, like, the big push or influence, like, on this next, like, album? 
I think maybe more than ever, more than the last one, it's going to be a little more, uh, even more like Latin grooves and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to mix like rock. Like, I mean, I love like heavy rock stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to mix, how can I put that together, but still have it be like danceable, you know? Yeah. Because I kind of, some rock stuff kind of can lose its groove. I don't know. But uh, yeah. so it's like, it's hard to be heavy and like danceable, I guess. Is it's, what. it's an interesting mix. It's a, like, it's it's ambitious. But like uh, me personally, like I'm, I, I, I've been saying this quite a bit, but like I am a fan of like putting stuff together that it's like, oh, maybe it shouldn't like people or the normal person was like, those things don't go together. And like, yeah, like, well, I'm going to figure it out and, and make it go to, cause like, um, uh, I, uh, I, I feel like I keep talking about it, but there's like those moments where like it switches from one thing to like something completely other. Like, um, with, with Latin Fuse, there was a band here. I don't know if you remember a band called, um, that's, that's like, I, I'm going to keep shouting them out until they come back together. Um, uh, but they, they used, uh, they were called Werewolf Their Wolf. Um, and they were out of Dallas, but they, they had like a, a salsa break, like in the middle of like an indie song. Like it just like goes to the end and I'm like, for what just happened? I go that, I go, I don't know why that works together, but it does. You know what I mean? Yeah. Finding that. Um, so Latin and Fuse, you mentioned Santana. Dude, I used to be such a huge, like San that, that giant band feel like with Santana. I had like a DVD. I can't remember what the performance was, but, um, it's the first time I heard the song, uh, Fufu. And that song, that song is just one giant jam session and yeah. it's so cool like when they cycle through everybody doing their solos and it's like everybody there's like a fucking drum solo a conga solo like you know uh everything and and that was like when i really fell in love with like that style of like band i'm like that's really really cool because i'd never really seen like um kind of like that the latin fusion like band before and something and i used to really like like some and i like First, I listened to Santana for like the like radio music that he was yeah, doing. Yeah. So like uh, you know um, Maria Maria that was the first one. I was like, I fucking love this song. Yeah. And then like you know smooth or whatever. Uh, and then when I saw that DVD, like and saw like the entire performance, I'm like, Yo, what is this? Like it's crazy. Yeah. And we yeah we're growing up. He was already in his like 40s or whatever. Yeah. But seeing him like in his 20s. Stuff. And then playing, like, yeah, the, the, then I, I that, so that's how I like knew Santana as uh, that. Yeah. And then going back, cause like in middle school, like I wrote a <laughs> like a paper on him, uh, and then I started looking back. And I was like, oh, like looking at like the the Woodstock moments and yeah, all like dude. the wild psychedelic like shit that he used to play. I'm like, yo, this is trajectory is crazy. And then like he's like this like guy from Tijuana, just like that came and and now it's playing like this stuff. I'm like, bro, this is wild. The story about like his guitar, uh, what was it? Uh, I think it's the Woodstock story where he. Uh, I think they had taken acid before because they had like a bunch of hours before they played, and then they told them last minute they're like, "Oh no, your time is this," and it's like right away. So that performance, people were like remember him like just going crazy on it. And he's like, "No, I like in my head that guitar was a snake, and I was just trying to like stop <laughs> it from biting me. So that's why I was playing it the way." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "Man, what is acid like?" <laughs> yeah, man, I love that uh, video and like the percussion players back there, like sweating and like just getting down man it looks so fun so the percussion is one thing i think that immediately kind of gives me the um the the latin fusion vibe immediately like that's the, the snare always like the little the bounce off of it it's way different than like your like the normal so it gets more of a, like a ring to it mm. um and that's how i immediately like look at but i love that it's really like it's really active and i've seen like um mm. like videos of percussion players and like um like just like the the banda like style music and like mm. they're really good like it's it and it's something i think i took for granted i'm like it's got to be basic right because the music's like not too crazy complicated and like i saw just like a drum cam of one and i'm like no this dude's going in like what like it's, yeah, yeah. it's so but percussion is like a a big thing i think i think rhythm in general that's why like um your drums and like bass are like these really nice roots for what i've become a fan of which is like grooves like being able to groove to something the the thing that actually like causes like the body movement the yeah. dancing is is i think at the root base those two instruments like uh, bass and drums yeah yeah and like the banda stuff i think i think like at this point um everyone listens to everything kind of so it's like some of those banda drummers 
also were playing, you know, like some Slipknot shit and yeah. the, when they were rehearsing or something like that. So um, they're like in this banda environment, but they can play like whatever, you know. Yeah. It's no, and that's when I like, I kind of like, it kind of opened my eyes to that. I'm like, oh, like just because they play this type of music doesn't mean like they're limited to that. And you can see them adding like influences from yeah, like yeah, other yeah. stuff into it. I'm like, that's, I go, that's kind of tight. Like, I mean, there's a bunch of artists that I've seen like do that. Like, uh, uh, I remember when like, Juanes started coming out like he was like in a metal band like before he started writing on like the like you know rock pop hits that like he started yeah, yeah. doing and like what he does now but I'm like you know they grew up playing metal like there's all these like things that build you up to like what you do now um and like uh I feel like there's so many influences that people like have throughout their lives that shape into like what they like now that's why it's great like I, I always find it wild when people like are limited to like i like this genre and this is the only genre that i like i'm like how do you do that i go that seems so <laughs> difficult like yeah, yeah to just like one thing i go because there's so much that you'll find um outside of like once you start broadening up like your like the the bubble a little bit and she's like oh just try something and i like all of it I'm like it's fine like music, <laughs> music is like the most subjective thing in the world. Like you cannot like a whole bunch of stuff. I go, but try a little bit here and there and you'll find stuff that you like. You know what I mean? Like yeah, um, yeah. that's outside of something you would normally listen to. Like Yeah, yeah. You mentioned earlier like getting older and I guess like taste changing is what you're yeah. kind of thinking. Like I've definitely I've definitely experienced that yeah. <laughs> and I'm currently experiencing it. So it's like but yeah, it's like just part of the journey and like I still love all that old stuff, but I'm just continuing to add different like new space. stuff order. yeah yeah your different headspace that's why uh i used to be <laughs> i used to be a lot more critical of bands um when they would change their sound or whatever um and with growing just like up i'm just like oh like dude I, my change my taste has changed so bad like so so drastically um where you're right like i still enjoy going back and listening to this stuff i go but what i and mainly interested now is completely different than that. I go, there's certain elements that stick around. Like, I will always be a sucker for, like, a really good voice. Like, just because, like, that's, uh, I, I sing. So something, like, vocally really, like, good is, like, will always catch my attention. Mostly the time that. But then, like, I find stuff that just, like, um, there's certain stuff. And I, I, I remember I used to only use the word, ex like, breakdown exclusively with, like, metal music. But then I started, like, seeing it, like, breakdowns and like indie music and i'm like oh that's still like a breakdown or whatever yeah, so like yeah. th th i go there's still like that moment where like you start like bobbing your head it's a different like completely different vibe but like it it it's just it, it translates over like it's not limited to just the one genre that i was like about you know what i mean like yeah, it, yeah. It, it flows into like everything and and I, and then i realized like oh, i was like oh there's too much energy to start like being really critical of like all these like bands and stuff and i was like as a musician like oh i would not like to play the same stuff over and over you know what i mean like you always want to like find what's interesting like with you like now like you, you have your roots and then you have like what you experience not only like music but like culture you know uh movies what your personal experience that, yeah. that lead you to like start like branching out and liking other stuff that's why mixed mixed genre builds are so like interesting to me and like fun that's why chill sounds was so fun yeah because i'm like dude we had a bit of like everything and i and i had such a great time you know what i mean i mean besides running around like all <laughs> crazy like the whole time like it was such a cool like experience and i've seen like i'm glad that they're getting more popular because yeah, most people listen to music like that like they listen to a bit of this a bit of that it depends on what the mood is you know what i mean like what you like want yeah to. exactly yeah yeah like for me it's even hard to be to hear like to be at a show and hear one set of one genre like even that is yeah challenging by the last you know 10 minutes you're like all right i've heard this it depends on what because like it it i have the the idea um of like the, if you're writing in a, in a genre like when i was writing in metal like i didn't like listening to metal to write metal like it just it seemed kind of <laughs> when i kept doing that i kept generalizing ideas and it would end up being like very similar to like what i had just listened to so then i just like i was like what if i pull from like all these other places so the bands that i started liking was like um because i wasn't into heavy music at all like um before like i think the the heaviest i got was um maybe like lincoln park was like the first like thing that i i kind of got into like that and then um there's a band called a day to remember that had like the heavy like parts but we're singing like really poppy choruses and i'm like 
what the hell? Like, okay, I like that. And then uh, there's a band called Dance Game and Dance that had a guy that was saying like really like soulful R and B like vocals next to like this wild chaotic like screaming. I'm like, I like that too. So like all these like mixed genres. So I kept finding like what I liked out of all this, and and those combinations seemed to like really stick with me. So I'm like, oh, for some reason I like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the the music taste. I think like I said, I think most people listen to. Um, so many different things so at shows where you get a little bit of something and then something and you can there's a way to even cater like mixed genre shows like you can find you know groups or musicians or or you know people from different genres and still cater a lineup in a way that like this makes sense to you yeah, like, yeah. to where it's not like completely like rant like you can't be like polar opposites you know what i mean because yeah, yeah. then you're like it can't be a meaning like hot to like really cold like to something like so it can't can't go like that crazy but there's a way to cater like shows so we're like if you like this like if you like the cadence in this like you know uh uh in this band you might like cadences and like this hip-hop artist who does like this similar type of stuff because i used to do that all the time like with because I, anytime i like wrote my like screams or heavy parts i would take heavy influence from like hip-hop artists because like i like the bounce of like cadences and like their mm-hmm. rhythms and stuff and i'm like okay take that so that's like where i got that stuff from it was it was most likely never the same genre influencing what i was writing like i would try to take from as much as i could yeah man uh i think i'm kind of similar or i mean maybe just cause, like my tastes are changing the stuff that mm-hmm. i'm listening to right now is like pretty happy and uh but it's still kind of like so just one this is a random band that maybe mm-hmm. i feel kind of like would have been a band that when I was younger I was like totally against even though I really didn't hadn't been exposed to them but yeah. this band called Fun oh yeah um, their first album I think I think it's called like Aim and Ignite or something like that but it's like a pop album at its surface yeah but it's like really fusion-y like um, it does like a lot of uh, transitions mm-hmm. and kind of like theater like or like opera like how like ah, the songs okay. kind of interweave and stuff like that so anyways it's like so i'm being influenced by that stuff but it's not like really doesn't really sound like what i'm working on or whatever yeah. i guess kind of similar to what you're saying so i mean yeah there's a bunch and that's what would happen to me like the most so i got a friend um actually that dude <laughs> so uh, uh my friend ed plays in this in, in these hardcore bands ballista and karama and like super like intense like hardcore music and i always i i we I mean we've been friends for a while now and i would ask him like you know what's your favorite artist and it's like these really like mellow like really soft indie artists that he's a really big fan of um and i'm like okay uh, and, and and he's like yeah and i'm like i go how do you like write you know write stuff and he's like well yeah it's it's different but like it, it's you're what you love like you can always write like outside of like what you're currently like obsessed with or or what's going to catch your attention because i got i got into a point where i didn't i didn't like the simplicity again i was being like a snob i didn't like the simplicity of what like pop music was i'm like i go there's nothing to it like there's a lot like they're basic all this stuff and it got to a point where i'm like well there's a reason the formula works like there's a way to make stuff catchy and things like that and i started enjoying like i'm like oh i enjoy songs like don't have to be super complicated like it just has like a catchy chorus groove something that i'm like oh okay i can i can dance to this i can like this um and being more lenient towards like those like type of genre i'm like oh, okay everything has its place here and there yeah. you know what i mean like everything's got a uh, a way to write because i also do like songs that are like you know kind of not what i'm expecting like i said i i like those those jumps um I bring this up. Uh, I, I talk about them way too much. You can ask Bert, but uh, there's a band called Sleep Token, and uh, they they just like released a song, and in it's like really like heavy, but they they don't typically do scream, so it doesn't do anything like that. But at the end of it, it's got kind of like a really funky outro that just completely like is different than that. And I'm like, yes, surprise me. Like I like yeah. to like not know where this is going. Um, but again, in the past, I felt like I would have been like, that's. Like, that's not like what a metal song is or that's not what this is oh, yeah, yeah. And, and but now i'm like I'm, I'm just so open to like just most things like i said for the most part like i said music is super subjective you don't have to like everything but for me i can find almost at least one thing that i like 
in like every like song that I listen to. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not gonna, maybe it doesn't become my favorite song or whatever, but I'm like, that part was cool. Like, or, in, yeah, being yeah. like enough like that. Yeah. Yeah, just like you said, like the breakdown, like they do something, or really something cool yeah. or like something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, or like the, uh, cool vocal harmonies. That's another thing. I don't have a. Uh, very many vocal. It's all yeah. mostly instrumental, but I really like um, like stacked vocal harmonies. Yeah, and uh, that's one thing I'm gonna try to include more on the next album is like guest singers mm. and uh, just doing like some like harmonies. Stuff. Where do you, where do you sign up for this? Let's get it, dude. Come on. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, one thing I was gonna say too, maybe is like a maybe you have a similar experience where. I'll hear like a new album and like fall in love with it. And I'm just like, man, this is the best thing ever. Like, <laughs> and then like, this is the pinnacle of being a band and I want to be like this. Yeah. And then like that goes on a while. But then like, no matter how hard I try, the stuff I write just doesn't sound like it. So even though I may be like in that moment mm -hmm. thinking like, oh, I want to sound like this. Like it's, I'm never going to sound like that because they're them and I'm me. And, and then, uh, then you just move on to the next. You find the next album that you love. Yeah, because you. So then, over time, you just yeah. compiling all your favorite things that you love, and like uh, putting it, putting out like. Your when version. you finally write something, it's literally just a culmination of all. Yeah, that yeah, stuff. yeah. So, so then it's still unique, or hopefully. Yeah, because yeah. if if you try to write like, if you 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 can't combine the the, the parts of like being genuine and like authentic with trying to copy exactly what somebody else did i go because the way they got there is not the way that you got there you got there i was like let's try to copy this and yeah, like, yeah like i had that happen like there's a you mentioned like those 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 albums that you get like obsessed with i'm like I literally like this is the best like thing ever at the moment and like uh so i discovered a band last year um there's two albums that come to mind immediately um there is a band called moxie the band um that is like there's a debut album i don't know how i found them but i heard one song and literally i heard the album I'm like this album is perfect like what the hell like i was like this is great and it's I, I i get really into like these like 80s it was like it's like an 80s kind of synth pop band i might be making that up like i don't like, i don't know how to genre <laughs> fucking bands but uh but the vocals sounded a lot like uh florence and the machine so florence and that so and it was this weird combination. I'm like, this is, I go, this is the epitome of like what that is. Like, I want to write stuff like that. Yeah. And then I got, um, there's a band called uh, Los Mesoneros. Um, it's like a, like an indie pop band, I guess, but a Spanish one. And they have an album called Pangea. And I, it's, to this day, it's still obsessed with it. Like, this was just <laughs> last year. So I'm like, nice. I go, it's so good. I go, it's so good. I go, how do you write something like this good? Like, I, I, and it, that's like, it got through my head. I'm like, we're like, that's an album where I look back and I'm like, I like all these songs, like, are really good. Like, I'll play it beginning <laughs> to end. And I was like, how do you, I go, how do I write that? I go, but I can't sit down and write that stuff because I'm like, I don't know. I don't have the, the other like influences that they had to get here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But now, those two bands have become part of my like influence. So yeah. like with the next thing that I'm going to write. So I'm sure bits and pieces of like those elements that I picked up over there will end up in whatever I write next, you know, um, which is completely fascinating. Like to me, cause everybody, that's one thing that every single person has their own unique, like set of like um, those influences, like of what, what you listen to when you listen to it, you know what I mean? Like are you sure? Like, you know, both of us could have listened to the same album, but maybe you listened to it, like, as a kid, like, who knows what's happening here, or I listened to, like, a few weeks ago, you know what I mean? Um, like, I was talking about the Mars Volta, like, my experiences with them mostly, like, in the now, like, in the past, like, past years, like, but there's people who have been fans from, like, the longest time, so yeah. that's gonna be, like, a different, like, take for them, so maybe for them, that influence is a lot heavier than what my influence is over here, and it, it, it's, it's so cool and unique to, like, see why, like, when people write their own music, is to see that in like their music and i'm like oh like it's cool that's why i like doing this because i'm like i get to get a little peek of like how did like i see the end product like oh how did it get there you know yeah, like yeah. how does how to how did you come up with this like what what's influences why do you like to write music you know to begin with um it was was bass your first instrument or how did you like get into like playing music uh, i started on guitar like my family got me a little small uh, acoustic for to like my birthday one day mm. and then i started taking lessons but then i like eventually got an electric guitar then a bass 
But then when I was like around 18, I uh, started hanging around with this cumbia band called Químicos del Son. Why do I they, know that? You probably know them. I think they're I, like, like yeah. from Fort Worth. Yeah, they, they've I been around them. a while. And uh, I started hanging around with them, and then they started letting me. I asked them one day, like, "Hey, can I play rhythm guitar for y'all?" Because they already had a badass guitar player. Yeah. And I just wanted to play. I was like, "Hey, can I?" Because I, man, that was like I first started going to shows, and they were like doing some cool shows. Mm-hmm. And I remember just being in the audience, and like, man, these are like, I'm hanging out with these guys, and they're up there like killing it right now. Yeah. And, like being so amazed. <laughs> so finally, I like asked him if I could play guitar, and uh, he was like, "Sure." And I sucked, and like the <laughs> and lead <I> guitarist <laughs> had to like tell me the songs and the chords and stuff. Yeah. And uh, but then I eventually the bass player left, so I started playing bass, mm-hmm. and then I pretty much fell in love with the role of like playing bass in yeah. the band at that point. Like, and it made more sense to me. Like the guitar player was teaching me stuff on bass, and I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Like, you you uh, dumb it down to four strings. Yeah. <laughs> like I can do this. But uh, I really enjoy the role, too, of, like, the foundation and, like, the rhythm, too. Like, if the bass isn't playing good rhythm, then it's just, like, not going to feel good. And same with the drummer, too. Yeah. Like you said earlier, bass and drums. The, the, the life of that, of of every song, like, that they, they're they necessary. Like, well, I mean, I, it, it, drums, is, like, drums especially, but, like, I didn't realize how empty a live set sounds like without bass. Um, so until we had our first show when we played in the band and we, we didn't have a bass player, but we just like played a show. We just like wanted to play a show. So we played anyways. And I heard that back and, uh, I was like, dude, this doesn't sound as, as big. Is it like, I've heard other bands like sound like, cause everybody else that played that. And I was like, this doesn't sound like that big. And it's that, it's that bass. And, and I honestly, I was one of those that took bass for granted all the time. And I was like, I can't even hear until yeah. it, you, I, I couldn't discern it at the time, depending on what like genre or what band you hear. Some of them, it's just like, again, that really big foundation. And then there's other bands where like, I started seeing like bass take leads and, and playing lead parts and stuff like that. Especially like I got really into like math rock and like bass players had some awesome like line, like lines and stuff like that. And that, and I'm like, Oh, that's when I started seeing like those five and six string basses where yeah. like, people were like doing all these things i'm like bro what the hell man <laughs> um but yeah when i wasn't noticing it i would only notice when it wasn't there and i'm like this is empty i go this yeah. is crazy empty um so it's definitely like an essential part of like just bands in general like you need to have that feel like it's what kind of pulls it all together i think for the most part yeah yeah and like that frequency range is like missing if yeah you like just have that hole there yeah, it's definitely it's definitely something completely necessary. So, um, I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> um, but no. Um, so, ALG, you say you have a you have a demo uh, album kind of in the works. We're just kind of figure out the rest of it at the moment here. Um, are y'all playing anything soon? Um, I don't have anything booked, but I'm. I have a. I don't know when this is going to be released, but... Mm, next, Not this week, but the next week. Okay. Well, I'm planning on having the more interactive shows. Like, actually having the interactive shows at uh, venues or just, like, locations. Ah, oh, okay. Do you like, any, at least do you once a month or oh, so. Okay. Um, I don't really... I have one next Saturday, but I don't know if this will be... Uh, this upcoming Saturday? March 4th. Oh, okay. So this won't be out there. But we'll, we'll still, like, share it on all our stuff. Yeah, this. yeah. But then you'll start having... More you said of that? Yeah, yeah. That's like what uh, my main focus is in like Do you have an for the interactive like nights. Um, no, I don't. Well, other than the interactive music experience, but that's just oh, that's I need to get right. something you need, you more need catchy. Need something catchy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, man. That's my main goal, and like ultimately, with that, also the band like would be playing live. Um, while the people are manipulating the sounds, what? But right now, holy shit! Right now, because I'm like still testing it and stuff. Yeah, um, I'm just using pre-recorded tracks. But eventually, like my ultimate goal was like to, to have a live one. Yeah, yeah. That actually <laughs> sounds really fucking cool. That's crazy. What's where's the one on the fourth? Um, it's gonna be at uh, 500x. It's like an art gallery in Dallas. Oh, okay. Um, I have a friend that knows a friend he's having like an exhibit and he's letting me uh jump on there and do have yeah, it there at the mass. same time so cool um cool so we have a uh 
album that might be you might get in some music from that sometime yeah, in yeah. the future. I'm not you don't have to <laughs> promise any dates, it's fine. But it's coming out, so excited for that. The interactive like music nights, check those out. Um, I like that. Interactive uh, music night. Interactive music night. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, we'll spitball some more names. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm working on the uh, on the way home sessions too. So yes. if anyone wants to uh, hit me up, jump on. Man. It look, I mean, those look again. Those look amazing. <laughs> so if you want to jump on, they like I said, they're gonna be different places, but like it's it's a vibe. <laughs> yeah, it's and studios cool. too. Yeah. Uh, if they want to like, um, you know, help us out or just be a part of it and. Uh, l- Get uh, bands in their studio, then that'd yeah. be cool too. So, I'll absolutely, just... man. Well, I I appreciate you stopping by, man, and taking time out of your day for for stopping by and talking to me. Um, and we're excited as hell for like everything that you're working on. You you definitely like once I started seeing everything you were doing, I was like, dude, you have your hands in so many like projects. It's so it's so really cool. Um, but yeah, definitely like anything. Uh, if you need help promoting any of these events, just let me know, and like we'll be glad to try to share as much stuff. Like I said, it's all about building that community. I think like the stuff that you're doing is is doing just that. Um, so I really want to appreciate you, Austin, uh, for coming by. But um, this has been episode 62. 62 with Austin from ALG Squeezebox Bandits Interactive Music Nights. All of that. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. <laughs>